What's up YouTube and welcome to a new video. Now when I think about the Lamborghini Euros, three things come to my mind. Expensive, speed and depreciation. Now on the first two I think we can agree. The car is super expensive and super fast. But is the depreciation also super high? My first guess and probably also yours is to say yes. After all, it is a big luxury car and those are notorious for their high depreciation rates. And an example of this you can find by clicking on the pop-up banner right over here because that will bring you to my Porsche Panamera analysis. However, you can also find several reports on the internet which point out that the Euros is one of the slowest depreciating SUVs and also some influencers are starting to champion Euros values. Nevertheless, I am a bit skeptical. In this video I will therefore show you in a data-driven way how much the Euros actually depreciates. Moreover, I will show you how the curve compares to the one of the Porsche Cayenne and the Bentley Bentayga. But before we start, please remember that you can comment down below with a car for which you would like to see an analysis. This video was for example requested by Burke H. Now let's start by having a look at today's market with the following graph. You can see that we have the model year on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis and that each euros in today's market is displayed with a bubble. In total there are only 89 cars for sale and the median price for a euros is $254,000. And for this price you're most likely to get a car with 8,800 miles. Now as you can see the euros market is a bit messy. On the one hand we have some low mileage examples which are priced at the top end of the market like the ones over here and over here. Then we also have some used cars with a slightly higher mileage like the ones over here and over here. There is however only one new euros for sale and this makes it a bit tricky to draw a depreciation curve in here. But let's see what we end up with. The blue line shows now that the current average depreciation per year is $17.6 thousand dollars or 6% for a euros. However, like I already mentioned, this is an average number and it is key to interpret it as such. In the first year the car loses $34.6,000 or 12% while in the second year of ownership this is reduced to $14,000. Alright, so how does this curve compare then to the one of the Cayenne and the Bentayga? Let's include those in the graph. But before we talk about the numbers, let me first explain what you exactly see here. The Bentayga market includes both the facelifted and the pre-facelifted cars but only the V8s. The W12s are not included. What is also not included here are some higher spec cars like the Design Series and the Milliner. We simply don't have enough data points for those. Now when we look at the Cayenne, then you can see that only the most recent generation is included. You also need to know then that these are the turbos, so not the Turbo S's. Initially I wanted to include the Turbo S, but there were simply not enough cars for sale. If you are by the way interested to see the full depreciation curve of the Porsche Cayenne, then I recommend that you click on the pop-up banner right over here. That will bring you to my depreciation analysis of the Range Rover Sport, but it includes the full curve for the KM. Now then, it's time to have a look at the numbers. Like we already saw, the Euros loses on average $17.6,000 per year or 6%. For the Bentega, this is a lot higher at $29,500 or 13%. And for the Cayenne Turbo this is $30,000 or 20%. And as you can see, the Euros indeed keeps its value the best. Also when we look at the drop in the first year of ownership, we can see that the Euros has the best residuals. It loses $34,600 or 12%, while the Bentega loses $42,200 or 20%. And this 20% is again similar to the drop in Cayenne values. So to sum it up, based on what we see here, the Euros indeed loses relatively little, if you can call $17.6,000 little. But what about the depreciation per thousand miles driven? That might give a different view because we're not dependent on the model year categorization. So let's have a look at that now. You can see that we have now the mileage on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. Now first, you can see that there's a very large variation in the mileages. There are some cars for sale which have close to zero miles, but also some with 35,000 miles. So people are actually using their cars. Now, when we look at the depreciation per thousand miles curve, then we can see that on average, a Euros loses 1,400 per thousand miles driven or 0.5%. But also here, just as with the depreciation per year, please keep in mind that this is an average number. You can then also see that this number is much higher for the cars below 5,000 miles and slightly lower for the higher mileage cars. You can also see that the blue shaded area increases a lot when the mileage increases. 
And this means that the uncertainty in the prices increases over there. And naturally, this is the result of the few cars which are for sale with such a high mileage. Now then, what happens when we include the Cayenne and the Bentayga? First, we can see again the obvious price difference here. The Cayenne is the cheapest and the gap to the Bentayga is around $50,000. The Euros is the most expensive here as it is another $60,000 on top of the Bentayga. Now then, let's have a look at the numbers. The Cayenne loses $1.6,000 per thousand miles driven or 1.1%. For the Bentayga this is $2.4,000 or also 1.1%. Hence, the Euros also wins here. You can then also see from the slope of the line that the curve is much flatter for the euros. All right, so from the previous two graphs, it's quite clear that the depreciation rate for a euros is relatively low, at least low for a big luxury SUV. But could it be even lower than some cars which actually have a very low depreciation rate? Like, let's say a Porsche GT3. That is exactly what we will find out now as we will rank the euros on the depreciation leaderboard. And this leaderboard compares almost all of the cars which I've analyzed on this channel based on their age and average relative depreciation. Before I show you that though, if you like this video, please remember to support the channel by smashing that like button. Thank you. So, the leaderboard. You can see that we have now the age on the horizontal axis and the average relative depreciation per year on the vertical axis. And I realized that there are way too many colors in here for you to make sense of it. So every time when I talk about a specific car, I will point it out with an arrow. Now then, the Euros. This car is two years old and that means that it sits right over here on the x-axis. The relative average depreciation rate is 6.1% and this means that it scores far above the trend line. There are only two cars which do better. The first one is the 991 the 2 GT3 with a rate of 5.2% and the second one is the Huracan which also has a rate of 6.1% but that is a bit difficult to see here because it's the same rate as the Euros. Now if we look at the other end, so all the way at the bottom, then we can see that the Aston Martin DB11 has the worst score. Hence, the Euro scores also here very good. You can see that a rate of 6.1% is more in line with cars which are 4 to 8 years old. Now I also looked at another depreciation leaderboard. The one for the depreciation per thousand miles driven. And also there the Euro scores very good. It actually scores so good that for the cars which are 2 years old, it has the best score followed by the GT3. And that is very remarkable. So what does all of this mean for the future values then? After all, that's probably what you're interested in if you are looking to purchase a Euros now. Well, if you are in the market for 2020 Euros, you can just follow the depreciation curve to get a rough price estimate. Depending on the mileage which you will add, the price will be higher or lower than what is indicated by the curve. But what if you are in the market for a car from model year 2019? For that model year we don't know the curve yet. And this means that it is time to plug in the depreciation per thousand miles and the depreciation per year into the forecasting model. You can see now in blue still the current market and in orange the forecasted prices. Hence, each dot represents the value of a 2019 car one year from now. You can also see that there are quite many forecasted points. And that's because each point represents a car with a different mileage. The low mileage cars will of course have the highest price and the highest mileage cars the lowest price. Now if we look then at the numbers, then we can see that the forecasted price drop for a 2019 car is 17,480 euros. And this is slightly less than the current rate of 17.6 thousand dollars. But this of course makes sense. It would be quite strange if the depreciation curve became more steep. However, just as with all forecasts, you need to keep in mind that this is a forecast and that it carries uncertainty. Hence, the forecasted values might not materialize. All right, so far we have established that the depreciation per year and per thousand miles is quite low for the euros and that the euros is quite in a good spot when it comes about the depreciation. And as we just saw, it is also likely that this low depreciation rate will continue into the future. So let's say that you are among the lucky few viewers who is actually in the market to purchase a Euros. How much should you pay them for one? Well, most likely you're looking for a car which offers the best value for money. And in my mind, that means the car with the lowest price, the lowest mileage and the newest model year. And we can take all of these points into account with the following 3D plot. You can see that we have now indeed the price, the mileage and the model year. You can also see that each car has a different color. And the darker the color, the more likely it is that that specific car has a fair purchasing price. Now when we look at the darkest colored bubbles, then we can see that they hover around $240,000 and that they are mainly 2019 cars. If we turn the graph then, 
then we can also see that they lay between 5 and 10,000 miles. And in my opinion, this is currently the market sweet spot. If you decide to spend more, you are likely to get a slightly higher spec one. But in terms of mileage, you're not really gaining anything. And on that note, let's wrap up and conclude. So, the Lamborghini Urus. Most of the time when I see this list of the least and the most depreciating cars, I always need to laugh a bit. To me at least it seems that most of the material which they present is pulled out of thin air. The Panamera and the Euros for example both show up as one of the lowest depreciating cars. However, when you actually look at the data then you can see that the two depreciation curves couldn't be further apart. Now, having said that, the depreciation rate for the Euros is indeed very low. And based on the current depreciation pattern you can also expect this low rate in the future. But in the end, for these types of cars depreciation is largely the result of a difference between demand and supply. So this would mean that there is a large demand for Euruses and a relative shortage in supply. Now when we look at the demand side it is of course difficult to put a number to this. However, generally speaking I feel that there is quite a hype about the Eurus. There's a lot of social media attention and it seems to be a popular car. If we looked into the supply side, then it is possible to find some information where Lamborghini states that it won't fulfill all orders directly in order to maintain some exclusivity. Moreover, we are of course in the midst of a pandemic and that means that there are delays in production. But this is not only affecting Lamborghini and the whole used car market has been quite strong over the last year. Nevertheless, as you probably know, results in the past give no guarantee for the future. So we need to keep a few things in mind here when we speak about future Euros values. From the demand side, you need to be aware that the Euros hype might go away. And this would of course decrease demand. Now if we look then at the supply side, then there are also a few things to keep in mind here. First, the Euros comes as standard with a 3 year warranty. And this means that it's not so long anymore till the first cars will go out of warranty. And this in turn may cause an increase in supply as people perhaps trade in their Euroses. Second, there are rumors that a facelift or updated version of the Euros is coming. And also this may cause an increase in supply as in combination with the warranty, people might switch to the latest version. Third, like I already mentioned, due to the shortage of new cars, the used car market has been exceptionally strong in the last year. In many of my videos I showed you then also that prices for used cars didn't change at all. And this of course also means that once the world returns to normal, prices might decrease as supply could increase. And with that we arrive at the end of the video. Now before you close this page, please remember to support the channel by smashing that like button. Also don't forget that you can comment down below with a car for which you would like to see an analysis. Once there are enough requests for a certain car, I will make a video about it. Don't forget then to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you will be notified when your requested analysis goes live. As always, a huge thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week for a new video.